that I start to forget All of the great things you did When did I throw away faith for the impossible, yeah And how did I start to believe You weren't sufficient for me why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? Oh, for you are more than able. You are more than able. Yes, you are. You are more You are more than able 
I need you to lift those hands right here. And can we just testify as one body this morning? Can we testify as one body? I don't care if you're at home. I don't care if you're in the sanctuary. You may be riding in your car. But I need you to lift this up and say, He's not done with me. He's not done with me.
come on, come on, come on. God is not done with you yet. Come on, put your hand right here, right here on yourself and declare and decree and confess that God is not done. Yeah, Joanna, woo, with me yet. God is not done with me yet. There's so much more, come on, to our story. Come on. Welcome, welcome to Manifest. Happy Friday. So glad you're with me today. Now, y'all, for real, listen. Over my shoulder, I'm seeing a she. I'm particular, but so y'all pray my strength in the room. I'm looking at my bed. I'm in a hotel room coming, streaming from the big state of Delaware. And that's bothering me, but I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to stay focused. He is not done with me yet. Man, worship, I don't know about y'all, but today worship got me. It got me. I just, as soon as we went into the song, I mean, I saw worshiping God, um, talking to the Lord in my heart about the possibilities that there's no limit. There's no limit to what God can do. Who says God can't do it? Come on. Who told you God cannot do that in your life? <laughs> Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Who told you God can't do it? Hmm? Who said it's impossible? Because with God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's right. There's no limit to what your God, Shanta, I confess that over you, what he can do in your life. Come on, let's take a couple of minutes and let's just open up our hearts. Open, take the lid off your faith. Okay, I don't know how it got on there, but let's take that lid off and let's truly, truly just open ourselves up to, to the exceeding, the abundantly, come on, above all that we can ask or think that God can do that thing that man will look at your life and say, man, this is unbelievable. They would say, it's the Lord's doing, come on, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Brenda, Oh, yeah, the chair. Wait a minute. The chair, the throne chair. You like it too? My crown. Okay, let's everybody fix our crown. My crown, when I put it on my head, was tilted, but come on, let's straighten our crown out. That's right. As women, we straighten each other's crowns out. Yeah, the blue, I like this blue chair. It's cute. It's cute. Ah, uh, oh, you saw us. Uh, Rochelle, how you been, Rochelle? You doing well? Jamie, that's right. God is not done with you yet. There's so much more to your story. Ah, yes, 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 yes. So Bishop last night, wasn't service last night good? I posted it, y'all. Now, if y'all have not watched last night, we're at um, a, a conference, actually, it's Faith Summit in um, Delaware. The church is prevailing. Honey, what's the name? Prevailing. Prevailing Church International, you know, and um, Newcastle, Delaware. The word last night was amazing, amazing. Bishop spoke on, yeah, it was fire, Lashona, um, bold faith, bold faith. And it was like, it was two speakers. I didn't know how it was going to go, but it went really, really well. I mean, um, Bishop spoke first, and then he had someone coming after him, Dr. Moore, and the word was phenomenal. It was just a powerful word. And he talked about the backside of faith. So we've been just, just building our faith up on the word of God and sitting and took, an all, took away all the fluff, the bells and whistles, um, short praise and worship, getting right to the word. And it's been good. So that's why I'm here in um, Delaware. Yes, there's no limit to what God can do, continue to do in your life. You just got to continue to believe God. You know, Satan's Satan desire and goal is to cause us to limit 
what God can do in our lives. You know, as believers, he knows he lost that battle. You know, when we leave this planet, you know, and we'll transition to heaven to live with our father in heaven. So he lost that. But what he wants you to do is to doubt God's ability, doubt, doubt God's um, word in your life, in your family life. And what we have to work and focus on, the work of faith is to believe God, is to get that word in our heart, um, to anchor ourselves in that word and refuse to allow life, refuse to allow the storms, to refuse to allow circumstances to rob us from the promises of God. So we got to stand on that word and we got to believe God regardless, right? The queen chair, I like it, yeah, I like it, yeah. You know, but if you have not seen that word last night, go to on YouTube. You can go to Prevailing Church International and you can um, play it on demand. It was powerful. Yes, uh, Lisa, the focus is to believe God. It really is. Satan wants to distract us. You know, in the season that we're in, we're living in the last days. And as a result of that, the scripture warns us and tells us about what the last days will look like. And he also speaks of, you know, deception. So when he says that, that means deception will run rampant. And Satan desires to deceive us, to get us to think thoughts that aren't true, to believe things that aren't right. And so we have to anchor ourselves in the word and we have to watch what we meditate on, what we put before our eyes and be careful what we listen to so we don't slide into deception. Somebody said, I'm going to hold my course. I'm going to stay in the word. I'm going to continue to believe God. Nothing is impossible for my God. Amen. Nothing is impossible for my God. So I'm so happy to be with you today. Happy Friday. Yeah, yes, I have a few announcements I want to bring to your attention. And then after that, we'll take some time and um, make room to receive the offering. And the announcements are as, wait a minute, I got to pull them up. Y'all left my iPad. home. Okay, here we go. Tonight uh, in Columbia, we have marriage enrichment okay, at 7 p.m. And it's located at Family Life Center. And we do have child care available for children, I think, uh, school age children, I believe. School age, uh, we're not doing infants, um, but I believe they do like preschoolers and uh, up to fifth grade. So we do have child care available. And when you do come and bring your children, all we ask is be a blessing to those who um, take the time out of their schedule to watch and love on our children while we gather around to enrich our marriage. And it's gonna be good tonight. Of course, we do have food available um, tonight. So, you know, get there on time and um, let's, let's strengthen our marriage. So that's tonight at 7 p.m. in our Family Life Center. That's for uh, engaged couples. If you got a ring, you can come. Marriage, uh, engaged couples are invited to attend. Uh, also, okay, WOW is hosting women's self-defense training, okay? in collaboration with the Orangeburg County Sheriff Department. Mark your calendars, women, 18 and up, April the 20th from 10 to 12 noon. There's a QR code right there. You can scan it. And uh, is WOW Down stands for Watch Person on the Wall. Okay, Watchmen, because we have women too who serve on WOW. Watch Person on the Wall. And women's first women's self defense class. Learn how to defend yourself. Learn how to be alert and sober during these times. And okay, Sunday church anniversary concert. Wow, with Miranda Curtis is going to be great. All right, it's going to be great. That's at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. All right, seating first come, first serve, except for those who are VIP. We got reserved seating for you, but come on out tonight and let's celebrate 28 years of God's healing, God's deliverance, God's provision, um, restoration. Um, what has he, what he has done through Right Direction Church International for 28 years. He brought us into and brought us out and he kept us. God has been good to all of us. He has healed many. He has 
Um, he has propelled people into business. You know, um, there's been so much that God has done for us through Right Direction Church International. Come on, just testify right now in the comment box. What has God done for you because of Right Direction Church International? That's what we're going to celebrate about. And free concerts. So come on out. Miranda um, um, Miranda Curtis is amazing. We thought good and hard. So who can we bring in to help us truly celebrate? And that was Miranda. So we're going to have a good time. Mother Daughters Tea. May 4th at 1230. We're celebrating the bond between mothers and daughters. The cost is only $25. Space is limited. Children are uh, can come at a discounted ticket rate. Uh, please register at imswada.org. There's a QR code right there. We extended the time of the, to register for those of us who need some more time, but it's going to be good. So um, seats are going very quick. So don't wait, okay? I can't help you pass the time. All right, May the 4th at 1230. It's going to be good. Amen. Also, let's prepare to receive our offering, y'all. Let's prepare to receive your, our offering. I was meditating on this passage of scripture, Psalms 96, and, um, and it reads, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Okay. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Now, here we go. Bring an offering and come into his courts. So every time we come together, every time we gather, and of course we know we got when we come into the house of God, we just we we worship him, we give him praise, we give him glory, we give him thanksgiving. But the scripture also speaks of that when we gather, when we come together, and here we are today gathering around the word today during this live stream, gathering those of you who will play this on demand later on. We're gathering around this time. And as we worshiping God and as we giving God glory, and many of us did just that during the time of worship, it also speaks of that we bring an offering. So your offering is part of your worship. You know, many people are like, well, I don't need to do that. No, the word says bring an offering as you come before God, as you come before his into his course, as you come before the Lord, as you stand before him, as you seek him, as you worship him, as you, you know, as you get wisdom from him and counsel from him. The scripture says bring an offering. And that's what we're doing today. We're bringing our offering. Y'all are amazing. I, I have branded y'all women of great substance. That's who y'all are. Uh, you, God has blessed the work of your hands and you count it a privilege, you count it an honor to return your tithe and to give your offering. And we thank God for you. Because of you, we're able to do what we do at Right Direction Church International. And we thank God for you. We thank God for all of you. And there's ways for you to give. You can go to rdci.info forward slash give, or you can text rdci to 844-624-1200. Or you can mail it into our P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina, 29221. If you're in the area of St. Andrews, you can come to 1234 our admin office and drop it off and say hello. Hey, Dottie. So I thank God for the manifest community, women of great substance, God's blessing and strengthening you and blessing the, the work of your hands. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every seed that has been given, every tithe that's being returned. We thank you, Lord God, that we know that it is you that give us power to get wealth. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you for increasing us more and more. So therefore, Lord God, we give our offering. We sow this seed, God, into the ground, the right direction, church international, and we declare and decree increase we declare breakthrough. We declare favor. We curse lack. We curse insufficiency in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree, Lord God, that this day, this is the last day that many will be in that financial situation because this is a breakout, breakthrough, break free seed time right now. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for breathing on us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hey, Dottie. Hey, Dottie. Hey, Agnes. What's up? 
Letitia, what's going on? Hey, Minister Joyce, what's going on? Listen, God's going to breathe on you, okay? I know I was praying that, but that just kind of landed in my spirit. God's going to breathe many of us. So our opportunity is going to come. Don't talk yourself out of it. Lean into it. Okay, you may not know how you're going to do it. You don't know how you're going to get it started, but trust God. What I'm discovering, mm, we're making things much harder than what they need to be. You've seen a lot, exposed to a lot, and you're thinking about all the stuff you need to have to do what God is calling you to do. Keep it simple, Letitia. Keep it simple, Darlene. Keep it simple, Carolyn, you want to keep it simple, Dottie. Keep it simple. Just take that step and don't compare it to anything or anyone else. Trust God, all right? And watch him increase and bless you. Amen. And breathe on what you are doing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say, I receive that. Put that in the comment box. I receive it. That's right. Kiss. Keep it simple. Swatter. Oh, Lisa. That's pretty cool. Kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple. Swatter. I like that. I like that. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So what are you making it much harder than what it actually needs to be? Which is causing you to procrastinate, causing you to wait until you do this and that because you think you need this and that. I'm telling you, um, um, God is going to empower your going and he's going to begin to get in that movement. You just got to begin to take that step and trust God and, and look towards him to breathe on that. So by, yeah, I receive it too. Breathe on my hands, Lord. Breathe on my hands. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. The best is yet to come. Hey, Bishop, say hey real quick. We saw Hi. you. No, we need to see your face. Hi. No, we can't see you. Hi. We hear you. We can't see you. <laughs> Bishop is giving me a hard time. He's being uncooperative. Well, listen, let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for just breathing on this time. We thank you, God, for revelation. We thank you for wisdom. Thank you, Lord God. You show us how to practically apply this word in our lives. Thank you for insight. Thank you for ordering our steps. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for showing yourself strong in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just lift up the women and men who are under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, Lord God, that they are blessed. Thank you, Lord, that you're ordering their steps in you. Thank you, Lord God, that you're increasing them on the right and on the left hand, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, that grace and favor is going with them and keeping them, Lord God, and making a way out of nowhere. Thank you, Lord God, you're surrounding us with favor like a shield. Thank you, Father, that somebody's name is in the wind in the name of Jesus. I thank you for their seed, their children, Father, that you're ordering their steps, that you're blessing them, that you're keeping them. Father, I cover them in the blood of Jesus. I cancel every demonic assignment, every demonic written charter. I decree and declare those words as written on the charter cannot come to pass, will not prosper. I declare and decree they null and void. Right now, we send them back to the sender, double fold in Jesus' name. Every negative word, every hex, every incantation, every curse, those words will not produce any fruit in their lives in the name of Jesus. They dry up right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that we are understanding, God, that these are the days of power, these are the days of, of glory, and we have great expectation for more, that the best is yet to come. Father, thank you, God, and we have great expectation, and we choose to believe that you, Lord God, is making some things coming together as we break forth, as we break into, as we break from these places that have been keeping us bound. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Awesome. Well, let's get into the word, okay? Let's get into the word. I told you I left my iPad at home, so I'm working with my phone, but we're going to be okay. All right. So we've been talking about the barrier breaker woman. That just did something to me when I said it. The barrier breaker woman woman. I'm not going to do a whole lot of review because I'm going to get into this this week. And one of the things we're going to zero in as a barrier breaker woman, we got to push past pain. 
You got to push past pain. Satan's job is to hurt, is to wound, is to mess with our minds. But as barrier breakers, we're going to have to push past and we're going to go into those places that God has revealed to us as what he has given us to occupy. And then, and for us to maximize, right, we're going to have to push past pain. Now, you know what Satan likes to do regarding us as women is to mess with the matters of our heart, our heartstrings, our family, our children. Sometimes, you know, he, he, he mess with the things that are dear and near to us. So don't be surprised. And I don't even know why I'm saying this, okay? Don't be surprised or dismayed or discouraged if things start to unravel or look very, very challenging in the area of family. You have to push past and don't allow that to get in your head. Make you feel disqualified, that you're unworthy, that you're not good enough. You have to keep going. That's a word for someone. Keep going and push past the pain. So let's read a part. I'm going to read the last verse of one of our foundational scriptures. And it's from the book of Micah. And Micah is a prophetic book regarding Jesus, about the restoration and the power of Jesus, that he's what he's going to do for his people. And we already established Jesus is the chain breaker. He is the breaker. And the 13th verse says, the one who can break through the barrier will lead them out. That's Jesus. He's going to break through the barrier. He's going to lead them out pass through the gate and leave. Ooh. Their king will advance before them. The Lord himself will lead them. So God's going to lead us. He's going to guide us and direct us into the places that he's calling us to occupy, calling us to dominate and to calling us to subdue. And, he's, and we have to understand that we can allow certain things to make us feel like we're not good enough, we're not qualified, because Jesus himself is the breaker, and he's the chain breaker. And as he is, so are we, Are so are we in this world. So he is the chain breaker, he is the breaker, and we are women who are barrier breakers. And we also look at and establish as barrier breakers, as women, he placed us in families to break and to lead and to guide. And one of our other foundation scripture is Psalm 68 and 6, that God places the solitary in families and gives the desolate a home in which to dwell. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. So God places us as solitary. He placed many of you as solitaires in your family. We talk about what a solitaire looks like naturally, like a stone and it's cut and, and it goes through fire. And many of us have been cut. We've gone through fire of perfection. And we can allow the, the process to make us back up, to make us shrink, to make us dial it back, to make us think something's wrong with us. This is for someone. Stick it out in your process. If you're in the fire, one of the things about solitude, when it goes through the fire, it is also placed after the fire into some cold water. Things are going to shift for you. It's going to cool off. But he's perfecting you. He's and, he's and he is polishing you up so that you can be that precious reflection of him. So you can't allow this process. So many of us are called to lead in families that you are born into, but you're not like. You were born into the family, but you but were not like them. You feel awkward. So some of us may feel like, man, I feel like a black sheep. I don't feel like I fit in. You know, some of those um, are characteristics of uh, indicators. That's a better way to put it. Indicators that you have been placed in that family to lead because you are a barrier breaker. You are a barrier breaker. Somebody say, I am a barrier breaker breaker. I am she. Some of you are getting it right now. I'm seeing that in the comments. So you not you feel like you feel awkward. You feel like why everyone's picking on me? Why all everybody's messing with me? Why everybody always talking and rejecting me and you know and making fun of me? You were born 
into, but you're not like them because there's certain things that God has placed in you to lead. Yeah, you are that barrier breaker to lead that family into a place oh, that he has called that family to be in before the foundation of the world. There's a purpose, there's a plan, there's a mandate, there's an assignment that he's bringing into the bloodline. And he's given many of us the baton this season for that family to break your family out of dysfunctional cycles, to break your family out of certain patterns. Come on. And everyone may not come along, but the word already say they won't come, but they're going to dwell in that rebellious place. OK, in that dry place and that, you know, in that place of toil and that place of frustration. But he called you for more. He called you to more. And so as Jesus is, so are we in this world. He was the lead breaker. And so we are leading people in our families, in our communities, <coughs> in our sphere of influence into places that God has called us to lead. Now, barrier, y'all, let's look at this word barrier. It's a fence. You know, a barrier is a fence or it's an obstacle that prevents movement or access. Yeah, you need to let that soak in, right? Right. Woo. That prevents movement or access. So what barriers are you dealing with that's preventing movement? Does it feel like you're in a holding pattern? That's a barrier. It's like this, this cycle is a barrier trying to keep you in a particular place, a partic particular place of living, particular place of being. And you're like, no, I'm not supposed to be here or block it, blocking your access. OK, blocking your access. A couple of questions here. Is God calling you to do or be or become someone that no one in your family has ever thought of. No one in your family, you haven't seen it before in your family. You're a barrier breaker. They have not done that before. God is calling you to go places to do things that nobody in your family has ever done before. You're a barrier breaker. Matter of fact, as you go to and make steps and move towards that place that God is calling you to occupy, you'll find yourself experience distance in your relationships with some of your family members. It's your relationship, your conversation becomes awkward. You can't share what God is doing in your life. They don't get you. They don't understand you. Some of them are even bothered by you. Don't sweat it. Don't allow that to distract you. Don't allow that to define you. That's on them. And it's on what God has called you to do because you're breaking out. You made a decision. I don't want to do this like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be like this anymore. There's more. There's better. Glory to God. God has something more for you and you, you can't even, you don't see it naturally, but you see it in your mind's eye. You see it in your heart. He's like, I know life is more. I know there's more to life than this. I know it's, things are better than this. I know everybody don't have to be nasty and mean to everybody. I know life is better. You that barrier breaker. Is God challenged you to be that one in your family? Mm. That you, that barrier breaker, do you feel like I already said in a holding pattern that there's some obstacles uh, restricting you, blocking you, or hindering you? Let's deal with that barrier. Refuse to allow it to stop you. Refuse to allow it to break you. That's right. Authoress, you are a barrier breaker. Let's go to Micah, the fourth chapter here. A few more scriptures here to a um, little bit longer than the other ones. Um, the 6th through the 10th verse. I'm reading from the New King's translation. So in that day, this is the day, y'all. In that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame. I will gather the outcast. And those whom I afflicted, 
I will make the lame a remnant and an outcast a strong nation. God's coming for you. He's coming for you. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. And you, O tower of flock, the stronghold of daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. Even the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? It's not a king there in you. Why are you crying? Why are you whining? Has your counselor perished? Mm, mm, mm. For pangs has seized you like a woman in labor. My God. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Woo-wee. O daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pain, for now you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. My goodness, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. That's a lot. But guys, I'm gathering those, okay? I, I got a purpose and a plan for those of you. And many of you feel like there's no purpose and plan for you because, you know, you know, what do I have to offer? You know, I, I'm not as smart as, you know, everyone else I see on social media, or I don't have that degree, or I don't have that experience, or I don't have that money. I don't, I don't have it, but, oh, uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm a single mom or, you know, or I'm divorced and, um, you know, and my life was look like this and what have you, you feel like an outcast. You don't feel good enough. Hmm. You don't feel worthy. God says, I'm coming for you. I got a plan for you. I got a purpose for you. I'm making you into a remnant. My God, I'm gathering you, okay? I'm gathering you into a place and I'm gonna lead you and I'm gonna bring you into those places I've, I've called you to occupy and dominate that I promised you. But he, And he said, but there's some pain there. He said, you're crying, you're whining about some stuff. I mean, you know, and But I, what I need you to do, this is, this is what the Lord's speaking right now. What I need you to do, it's like, you know, many of you are waiting for you to stop hurting. So when the pain stops, when I get over what I've gone through, I'll do. When I get over the hurt of my divorce, when I get over the pain of my miscarriage, I'll go and minister to that woman who are believing God for children. You know what? That's how God does stuff, man. You believe in God for the same thing that God will lead you to pray for, for somebody else. Ooh, he's coming straight for you. And he was saying, you know, and he said, he's like, I need you. Okay, you hurt. He said, don't wait for the pain to stop. Be in pain. Like a woman in labor who becomes focused because she knows the pain is preceding the desire that because of a child, it will be born. There's a pain associated with birth that because, and those are labor pain. And so you don't allow the labor pains to cause you not to push. You don't allow labor pains to, to cause you not to keep travailing, you know, at the end of the labor, you will have your dream. You will have your desire. So pain precedes the desire sometimes. And many of us are waiting for the pain to cease, the things to look good in your life, the things to look perfect. Then you say, then I'll do. As I'm saying this, I'm reminded of, you know, a, a time in our lives as we was getting ready to start the ministry. One of the first things I thought that qualified us for ministry that our finances would be together. And so when my husband came to us, he said, well, I think the Lord is calling me to start this church now. I said, well, um, don't we need our finances together? Do we need to like do our money to be at a different place? 
And he looked at me like, what? You know, that's kind of crazy. But of course, we went forward. And as we were working on our finances, we preached on finances. We didn't wait until we had to say, now we qualify to do this. And many of us, look, that's natural. That's natural. That's man's work. That's man's glory. That could even be pride. God said, you know what? I get glory out of your story. I get glory out of your process. He said, so we didn't wait until we got to a place. We waited on the word of the Lord. We allowed God's direction. We allowed uh -huh. God's green light to determine our going forward. OK. And so what am I saying? So many of us, you, many of us are waiting for certain seasons of past in your life to begin to do what God has called you to do. And God says, no, I'm, I'm calling you now. I know you hurt because of what's going on with your child. I know you hurt that, you know, that you, you thought that your life will look different, but it doesn't look at all what you expected it to be. God said, be in pain and push, push, glory to God. Who am I talking to today? Push, keep on pushing because you are a barrier breaker. You are a barrier breaker. God will get glory out of your story. He wants you to keep trusting him and in your weakness, you're strong. Glory to God. His grace is sufficient. He's going to empower you and he's going to help you. And people are going to look at you. How? And you can't take any credit of your, yourself because God said, I will get the glory. I will get all the glory. So don't let the pain stop you. So yeah, okay, you're divorced. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, cast some miscast. Okay, you had the bankruptcy. Oh, okay, you had to quit school. Oh, okay. This didn't come together. God say, uh-uh. And you're hurting, you're grieving over it. You're mourning over it. Maybe a loved one transition. He said, as soon as I, Lord, time goes by y'all. He said, as soon as I get finished grieving, I'll get back to it. You know, the devil will make sure if you have, God has a call and purpose on your life to be that barrier breaker, to be that solitaire in your family. He will make sure you stay in grief. And that's what you set as, as your, you know, as the goal. Once I stop grieving, I will go. I had to um, facilitate, host our encounter, our first encounter a week after burying my mother. That was hard. That was one of the hardest things I ever had to do to encourage women woo, to encounter God when I was just, I was trying to find him myself in my pain, my God. What I had to do, yes, Sandra, I had to push. I had to push past the grief. I couldn't allow the grief to, to say I could not go and do. Now, that's what God had called me to do. I'm not saying that you have to preach a message, but if you call to preach, sometimes we can't determine when or how or what have you. You know, God is the one. And there was no pressure from outside, my husband or anybody else. Pastor Mary was, um, my, was there and she said, I got you, sis. If you need me, I got you. And But I went in and I asked God and I prayed. And the Lord said, Marsha, if you don't do this, you're going to be stuck. If you don't do this, you're going to need people to come and get you. You're going to need deliverance. I need you to preach your way through. And I just got up there and, and was vulnerable and transparent. And what happened? I preached my way through. Was I still grieving? No. I still had some months and time to grieve. I still was going through my process. But I unstuck myself. Okay, I unstuck myself. And somebody here today, if you don't, don't allow the pain to stop you, you get unstuck right now. You make a decision and say, Father, right now, I, I'm not going to let the pain stop me. That thing that has lodged on the inside of you will become loose. Satan wants you to be too bruised, 
too broken to be a barrier breaker. He wants to be too bruised. That's right, Teresa. You're still here. Too bruised, too broken to be a barrier breaker. So what we have to do, and someone said this earlier about focus. You know, we can't focus. He wants you to focus on your bruise, but we don't. We can't focus on our bruise. We can't nurse it. We can't favor it. We can't allow it to determine how far we will go or what we are able to do. We don't focus on our bruise, okay, which is rehearsing it. That's what focusing is. Rehearsing it is also nursing it. Oh, no, I, people hurt me. I'm church hurt, so I don't want to serve in church. That's nursing it, y'all. But I mean, I, I don't want to our church hurt. One person or two people hurt you. Now the whole church hurts you. You a member of, of a church, you may have 100 people in your church, 200 people in church, 50 people in your church, 500, 1,000 plus. Two people in your church hurt. No, you, two people hurt. You're not church hurt. And so you, he wants you to rehearse that. He wants you to nurse that. I believe, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I think it's the 18th verse. Our light affliction is but for a moment, but is working for us, glory to God, a more exceeding weight of glory while we look not at the things that are temporal, but the things that are eternal. What's temporary? So say your light affliction is temporary. So you don't focus on what you're going through now, but we focus on that which we're going to, which is eternal. So don't focus. So you, which means you didn't you can't you can't rehearse that thing over and over again. You literally gotta like I, I'm not gonna think about that. There's some times where I'm working myself through something, and so I won't allow. If, and what the devil wants me wants to have, he wants offense, hurt, despair, disappointment, whatever it may be to set in. And, and my, your mind will start to go back to what happened. I literally like say, oh, I'm not thinking about that. I do that. I, go, mm, I shake my head. I move my hand like I'm wipe, wiping it away. I say, I, 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 I'm not going to think about that. Uh, no, nope, no, nope, I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing that. Well, and so what I'm doing, I'm stopping the train of thought. You have to stop the train of thought. You got to jump off the train. Change your focus. I'm in so much pain trying not to focus on the pain. I have no choice but to move. You got, I'm not going to focus on the pain. And, you know, and, and then, you know, as you, as you choose not to focus on the pain, you know, and pray about that. Ask God, what can I do so that I'm not, this pain will take over my soul, my mind, my will, and emotions. And God will give you a plan. God will give you a strategy, okay? So this is the word of the Lord to the barrier breakers that are here today. Isaiah 61, um, the third, starting at the third, mm, starting at the third verse, I'm thinking, okay, let me just reference the, the previous verses and it's a prophetic word about Jesus that the spirit of the Lord is on upon him and the, and the Lord anointed him to preach and he anointed him to set the captives free. Okay. And then here you go to the third verse to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. If there's anyone grieving, he said, I'm going to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Ooh, glory, that they might be called trees of righteousness. They got a job to do. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified and they shall build the old waste. Sound like barrier breakers there. They shall raise up former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. The stuff that Satan has wrecked havoc in the bloodline. So the anointing, this is a prophetic word about Jesus. The anointing that's on Jesus, he said the spirit of the Lord is on him. 
and he has anointed him to set the captives free and it, and then and to give unto them beauty for ashes okay if you're dealing with anything in your life they feel like this has been burned by Satan, fire, hell came for this, and there's no ashes. I'm gonna give you beauty for that. I'm gonna give you joy for your mourning, you know. And I, I have a garment of praise for you for your spirit of heaviness. So anybody dealing with heaviness, just begin to give God praise. Put on that garment of praise, because what He's saying that when I, as you receive what the anointing is here for, you got to receive the anointing, y'all. You got to receive what Jesus can do for your life. Receive the joy. Receive the beauty. I don't I don't know what you might deal with. If you're dealing with grief and you're mourning, grief is you don't grieve just because of a person. You can grieve because you're grieving over a lost opportunity. You can be grieving over um, uh, a relationship that's no longer intact. You could be grieving for you know a broken heart, somebody done something or what have you and your heart's broken behind it. Or you could be grieving because you, there's no one, that person has died in your life. If you're grieving right now, put in a comment box, I receive the oil of joy, hallelujah, for my mourning. I receive the joy of the Lord. If you feel like you experienced tremendous loss in your life, that there was some type of catastrophe, some type of crisis, See, there's a loss. You might have lost a business. You might have lost a, a uh, you're a, a, a child. You might have lost, um, you know, some things in your life, and that you were believing God to, you know, to bring to pass a dream, a goal, a desire. So I'm gonna get beauty for those ashes. I'm gonna put that in the comment box. I'm gonna get beauty for the ashes. If you're dealing with de depression, you're dealing with despair. If you're dealing with some type of heaviness, say I'm putting on my garment of praise right now. I'm out for the spirit of heaviness. Glory to God. That's right. You are moving from pain to power. I love that, Teresa. You're moving from pain to power right now. That's right. You, Francis, you're receiving the oil of joy for your morning right now. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Sheila, that's right. You're getting beauty for those ashes. Come on. Make put that, put that claim in. You I yeah, God, this is supposed to be like this, and it did not turn out that way. I I put a claim for beauty. I will receive beauty for my ashes. I'm receiving joy for my morning. Glory to God. Praise God. That's right. Put it in the comment box. Come on here now. That's good right now. So here we have, right? God said, this is what I'm going to do for you, but we got to receive this morning, this afternoon. You got to receive it. I'm getting beauty. That's right, Medea. I'm getting beauty for my ashes. I don't want you to forget that. If you don't, if you forget anything else I've said today, don't forget your confession, what you're putting in the comment box. That's right, Marie. I'm getting beauty for my ashes. That's right, Latrice. I'm getting beauty for my ashes. Glory to God. God, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna turn this thing into something beautiful. There, there's something gonna come out for my good. Glory to God. You're gonna work it out. You got you got to shift the, the 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 landscape of this thing here. What was once looking ugly, um, giving me grief. You're gonna turn it into something beautiful. Glory to God. That's right, Lavette. You're receiving joy for your morning. Praise God. Latoya, beauty for the ashes. Shanta, in the name of Jesus, beauty for your ashes. That's right, Lashawn. I'm getting beauty for my ashes. So this is what God said, I'm going to do in your life. As barrier breaker women, you put, you go to God. So God, this is the situation. This is what I'm dealing with. This is how I'm feeling. I, I'm, I'm standing on this word. You sent your son, Jesus, glory to God for me to destroy the works of the devil. And he is the chain breaker. And as a result of you placing me in this family, I'm the solitaire. There's some stuff that has transpired that has hurt me, broken me, made me feel frustrated. There's some things I don't understand, you know, regarding my job or my, my purpose, what you've called me to do. But what I do know that you said that you'll give me beautiful ash. You said you give the oil of joy for my morning. Praise God. Because he's saying for us. 
as we receive this, he said, you shall raise up former desolation that God's going to use us to restore. He's going to use us to repair. He's going to use us to build. And, and we can't wait until we, everything looks perfect in our lives. We receive the finished works of Jesus Christ, what he's already done in our life. We receive it by faith. God, this is what your word says, and I receive it. And I therefore, I thank you, Lord God, that you are working this thing out within my soul. And now I'm going to trust you to empower me to do those things you called me to do. Let's take a look at a, at, at a woman who was who she herself was a barrier breaker, but she had to get over some stuff. This is stuff she went through. And then you can find this woman's story in the book of Ruth. This is Naomi. Okay. Na Naomi was widowed. She was homeless. She was broken. She was bitter. She was lost. She was depressed because of the death of her husband and her two sons. She, women back then, if you didn't have a husband, you didn't have anything. And so she was she was traveling back to her hometown. And she had two daughter-in-laws with her. And she looked at them, she was like, look here, I can't offer you nothing. I said, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing for you, girls. You might you need to go back to your own people, go back to your family. Cause if I would if I would find another man and, and have a child which was their right. And by the time he grow up, y'all be old woman and he can't marry y'all. So y'all need to go ahead back to your family. And one left, Opa, Opa left. And Ruth stayed. She's like, she's like, no, don't ask me to leave you. I'm your ride and die daughter in love. So she went back with her. And this is Ruth's response in the 16th verse, where Ruth replies and says to Naomi, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us, she made a vow. Okay. She's like, look, I'm putting all out on the line with you, mama, Naomi. She said, like, I know you tell me to go, but this is my promise to you. He said, this is my promise to you. And if I, if I look like I'm veering off of it, may God deal with me. And so the 18th verse says, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them continued on their journey. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. Is it really Naomi? They haven't seen her in a while. They're like, is that Naomi? The women asked. And she says, this is Naomi's response. Don't call me Naomi. She responded instead, call me Mara. For the Almighty had made life very bitter for me. That's what Mara meant, mean, define. It means bitterness. She's like, don't call me Naomi. She said, she said don't, don't do that. She said, don't do that. And she said, don't you make very bitter for me. I went away full. I had it all together. I had it going on. I was blessed. I mean, I was living a good life, but then the Lord has brought me home empty. I left full and I came back with nothing. Why call me Naomi? Which means, the word means beautiful, I believe. Naomi means pleasant. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She said, don't call me pleasant. I'm bitter. Who has what you gone through made you bitter? Has what you gone through made you difficult? 
are you a little irritated on the regular for no reason? There may be a root of bitterness. How you've been handled, how you yeah, how you've been treated that cause an automatic response out of you. She's like, don't call me pleasant. I'm bitter. Sometimes we can go through stuff and go through stuff and it just changes us. And you know, it's and sometimes you don't even think about it. It becomes a part of you. And she says, I'm I'm not that pleasant chick anymore. I'm the bitter one. I'm the irritated one. I'm the nasty one. I'm the I'm the moody one. Oh, somebody said, yep, I'm mad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that we recognize, right? She's like, look, she's like, because the, like, the almighty God, he caused me to suffer. He's like, and sent a tragedy upon me. So the Lord, it, the Lord don't love me. God don't love me. If he loved me, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have gone through what I've gone through. If he loved me, my life would look different. Ooh. If he loved me, things would have turned out differently. And unknowingly, y'all listen, my sisters, when we when we think like that and when we say those words to ourselves, it can start creating fruit of bitterness within us. And when we just, we see things in a negative way, we see the glass half empty, we see the wrong, we see, you know, everything's not right. We just, uh, the lens, the filter of our soul is just negative because of all that we have gone through. And sometimes when I'm, that's why I said, as you receive that anointing from God, from what, from the pain, from the mourning, from the ashes, that you really truly receive it and, and welcome that anointing into your heart, to your soul, so he, it can begin to heal and deal. It will uproot that bitterness it will uproot those things that's still festering, that has not been dealt with, that has not been healed by the presence of God, that you just pushed past it. You just ignored it. You just, you know, you just kind of like glossed over it. Guys, I, I want that thing. I want that thing, you know, that you just ignored. He said, I know I want you to keep moving, but I also want to heal that. I don't want that thing to unknowingly make you a bitter person. Oh, y'all talking truth here today. Yeah, he wants to heal that. I mean, life is, it's, you know, life be life. And that's what the kids be saying, y'all. Life be life. And, and it's designed, really, it's really designed. Satan really designed. He just, he starts the process and sometimes it's just automatic. You know, he's, he is just set. You know, I've been thinking about this. Okay, I'm getting ready to digress a little bit. I've been thinking about this, like dysfunction, right? You know, something has happened in the bloodline. And as a result of that, <sighs> there might be like, you know, divorce. It might be, and then um, it might be, you know, hostilities and anger. And the kids see all of that. And even though, they grow up and their situation is different. There's learned behavior from that household. And so unknowingly, even though they may be in a situation that's completely different, they can reproduce the atmosphere of their, of their childhood life by, by the behavior. And what Satan wants to do is perpetuate behavior that, you know, that you keep that going on so that he could unlock randomly within the bloodline the things that you've worked really hard to get away from. Until those behaviors are truly addressed and changed, 
you unknowingly have the atmosphere of that dysfunction in your life, even though you're no longer there in the dysfunction. So that's why you got to invite and then receive that anointing. Okay, are y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm going to make sure you're with me. You say, you got to receive that anointing that's on Jesus, not only to prosper you, not only to heal your of disease, but to heal your soul so that that thing that God wants to you to be to lead your family out of talk about you the barrier breaker woman he's wants you to lead your family out of those barriers of containment you know dysfunction are containers those are barriers too and so he wants you to get victory over those things by no longer acting like where you came from Are you still sounding like your people? Ooh -wee. All right, all right, all right. So he said, I, I truly want to break you out of those things. So she's like, I'm bitter. Now, mind you, she back, she back with her people, but all of what she gone through is still with her. So Naomi had to break out of that barrier of her life experience, of her pain, of her disappointment, so it no longer be the filter of how she see in life, okay? Because she had a job to do. She had a daughter-in-law with her who made a decision, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you. And so what, so what Naomi made her mind, she said, I'm going to help Ruth secure a husband. So she could allow what she been through to shut her down, to shut her mind down. Ooh. She had to break the barrier of homeless. She had to break the barrier of poverty. She had to break the barrier of depression. She had to break the barrier of despair to think, to think. Man, I never forget. I don't know what was going on at the time. You know, um, we we had all just got back together as a family. You know, um, I think my, and not like, not just, but like a year after it, you know, my father left my mother. And as a result of that, she lost, you know, lost her home. And so we kind of were scattered a little bit. And then we came back and we were definitely living. That's when we were, li then we moved to like the hood. Now, contrary to what you hear from the pulpit from time to time from someone I would believe nameless, okay, about North New Jersey. When years ago, when it is the part of town that I lived in, it wasn't rough, okay? It wasn't rough years ago. And then when my father left, we had a two family home that we owned, and we had renters in, um, in the house. And it was a night, I mean, it was able to play out in the street, had a backyard. I mean, walk to school, walk to store, it was safe environment. So it was a nice section of North. And so when my mother got herself together a little bit, got herself on her feet, brought us all back together. I'll never forget this, moved to Park Avenue, y'all. And we moved to this, when we, here we are, we once was homeowners and now we were renters. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget moving, look, getting ready to move into this place, having to clean it. It was filthy. And I remember looking totally disgusted at where we were staying. Just disgusted. And I don't know what was going on. I think it was, it was bugs and stuff. And was they just bombed the place and the land, uh, um, landlord said, so I just bombed the place. So... You know, it may look like you might find some dead stuff, but it's just, you know, just clean it up. And we're girls. We're girls. So we haven't cleaned this place up. And I'll never forget it. I think I was like upset and irritated and crying when my mother said, Marsha. So she said, I need you not to allow all of this to cause you not to be able to think. She said, cry, but you got to think. 
She should be upset, but you gotta think. Be hurt and angry, but you gotta think. She said, the worst thing you can ever do is stop thinking. She said, you got to use your mind. I'll never forget that. So as I'm like crying and upset, I mean, I, where my stuff at? Where my things? We were displaced. We were literally starting over. Starting over. And she said, Marsha, I need you to get yourself together. I need you to think. You could do, do all of that, but I, you got, don't lose the ability to think. I will never forget that. And so here you have Naomi had to think because she had Ruth. You know, my mom had a nervous, I believe, I mean, I'm just putting pieces together. I believe she kind of had a nervous breakdown at the time. And so, um, which is why she was gone. I don't know for sure, per se, but I remember seeing her in a hospital. I remember that's what made me put things together. And she was speaking from a place of truth. Ooh, my God, my mother was speaking from a place from truth. She allowed what she went through to cause her to mentally shut down, mentally lose it. And she told me that she said, Marsh, you can't afford, you can't afford to not think. So she finally got to a place. She was getting herself back on her feet, did the best she could. It was really, I mean, it was such a step down for us, but here we are. We got to think. And this is um, Naomi. She's like, I got a mentor, Ruth. I got a mother, Ruth. I got to instruct and guide her and position her to be found as a wife. I need her to be able to find a husband. Yeah, you, you know, emotions are something that God does. He, he blessed us with emotions, Allison. He has blessed us with emotions. But we got to manage them, okay? We got to manage these emotions so these emotions don't take us to left field because then you lose time, okay? You know, so she's like, you know, have your moment. So what you got to do, work on having that moment, right? Have that release that you need. Take that release, take that moment. But as you tell, as you're in that place of having that release, having that moment, tell yourself, say, Allison, this hurts. Allison, this ain't fair. Allison, this, this is my word I use, you know, my husband don't like it sometimes. This sucks. But get, get it together. Get it together. Get, get it together. Manage my, your emotions so it'll have you saying something, doing something that you regret. Emo I mean, the, the message last night, one of the messages last night was, was so powerful and talking about the backside of faith. If y'all go back and listen to it, it'll be really good for you. But he, one of the things they talked about, he said, what happens that, you know, that causes us to quit, causes us to give up. And one of the things is unmanaged emotions unmanaged emotions will cause you to quit on relationships, cause you to quit out on, on purpose, cause you quit and leave a church, cause you quit and leave your husband, cause you quit and leave your, uh, your, your mentors, your friends, people who God ordained to be in your life because you're feeling some kind of way. Some kind of way. And so that was a pivotal moment for me with my mom, you know, sharing that with me she's like you know and she's like she gave me you know she had three girls and one and one boy she gave us the right to feel she gave us the right to feel she said cry okay you know it's i get it cry be sad but think your way through it think go way through she said don't allow your emotions cause you to mentally shut down don't allow your emotions to make you, you know, cause you to make a decision you should not make. How many of y'all made decisions that you know you should not have made? And you were just being emotional, that you said something, you did something, you left somewhere. Mm. So you got to manage those emotions. And that's what uh, Naomi had to do. She had to get herself together. I got to find this girl a husband. I got mentor her, and check this out. She couldn't mentor her through her from her pain, 
from her, her pain place. She had to mentor her from a purpose place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had to mentor her. And the, the amazing thing is Ruth had to position herself to receive. So when you're dealing with stuff, you've gone through some stuff, you got to position yourself so that you can allow what you've gone through to block your hearing, block your vision, and block your heart. That's good right there. We can't do this in a natural, but we can do it with the help of the Lord. I'm telling you, a real relationship with Jesus, y'all, for real, 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 will help you to navigate the stormy waters of your soul. It will help you. You cry out to God. You talk to Jesus about this thing. <clears throat> you lay it out there. He'll show you what's what and what's not. And you can say, God, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way. I'm not thinking clearly. How should I see this thing? What should I, how should I respond? And he will help you to see your way through. So she instructed Ruth, okay, what she need to do to find a husband. And as a result of that, she got, she gets married to Boaz. She has a child named Obed, who is the grandfather of David. So she was a barrier breaker. Here you have Ruth, an outsider from another tribe, another nation, through her obedience, through Naomi's impartation, Naomi, Naomi's instruction, Naomi's mentorship breaks the barrier of limits in her life. And now she is a, she, she shifts the trajectory of her bloodline. Oh, this is so good to me. Bless my soul. Shifts the trajectory of her bloodline. That's a barrier breaker. So as a barrier breaker, my sister, you listen here, you got to stay determined. <coughs> Not allow the pain to subdue your faith. Can't allow the pain to subdue your faith. Here you go. I don't think I gave you the scripture, um, Will, but Second Timothy, the first chapter, the 12th verse. Here's Paul gone through as a preacher of the gospel, beaten abused, imprisoned, lied, mocked. And he says, this is why I suffer as I do. Still, I am not ashamed, for I know him, and I'm personally acquainted with him, whom I have believed with absolute trust and confidence in him and in the truth of his deity. And I'm persuaded beyond any doubt that he is able to guard that which I've entrusted to him until that day, when I stand before him, that's the amplified translation. He's, I'm going through some stuff. I'm suffering. I'm in pain. But I'm going to push past it and still preach the gospel. I'm still going to do what God told me to do. Woo! Are you still doing what God has, has called you to do and told you to do? Are you still remaining faithful? Somebody said, well, I'm going through so much, I can't go to church. No, you got to go to church. You need to be in the atmosphere. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to allow your circumstances to speak to you, tell you what you can't do. No, you can't do it. No, you, it's life too hard. No, this is too, it's too much. No, push past all that. Keep showing up. You have to be determined. We can't be determined over here, but then we want to be determined in doing some things that you feel like, you know, God has called me to do this great thing and I'm going to do it. But you can't show faithfulness over here and you expect faithfulness to come out of there. You can't departmentalize faithfulness. You can't departmentalize determination. You can't departmentalize grit. Yeah, sometimes the decision to freeze and not face it, it costs you time. It'll cost you time. So here you have Paul's able to do what he's what God has called him to do because he had a real relationship. He said, I'm not ashamed because I know, I know him, I know him, I know who God is, I know he's a healer, I know he's a uh, you know, he's a provider, I know 
who he is. And he's fully persuaded, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation. I am fully persuaded that he'll do what he said he's going to do. Real relationship births steadfastness. It produces consistency. It produces stability. Okay, last scripture for the day. Because you break barriers by faith. Do you know God? Do you know who he is? Do you believe that he is faithful? Do you believe that he has the power? We started back where we started, back where we started. That we, that we talked about before we even got into the word, that we know he's able from worship. He's able to do the impossible. He's able to do what man said it can't be done. Numbers 23 and 19 said, God is not man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should repair. Has he said and, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Hey, rapasa and fulfill it. God's going to make it good. But we got to believe that he can. That's right, Patricia. My pain will not subdue my faith. This has been good. All right. Before we go today. Woo! If you joined us after the offering and the word has blessed you, Go to rdci.info forward slash give. Text rdci to 844-624-1200 or mail it into our PO Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina, 29221. If this word blessed you, empower you, and you have not had the opportunity to give, please consider giving today. We thank God for you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my God, I don't know what I do without him in my life. He's good to my soul. So if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just take some time right now. Come to the family of God. Repeat and pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I need him in my life. I believe that he's your son. He died on the cross, shed his blood for my sins. I confess I'm a sinner. I receive Jesus as my savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Just like that, you are part of the family of God. Go to rdci.info forward slash next steps and we'll get some information out to you. Thank you, Joanna. It's blessed my soul. It's blessed my soul. God's going to make it good. He's going to make it good. He's going to make it good. He's going to make it good. Woo! I will not allow this pain to do my faith. That's right. You know, Rochelle, if you need to cry, shed those tears, but keep moving. Keep moving. Thank you, Tina. Keep moving. Keep moving. Barrier breakers. Don't lay it. Don't allow the pain to stop you. God's going to do what he said he's going to do. He's a faithful God. Amen. Listen, got to get ready to go. I love y'all. Your barrier breakers. Listen, if you can join us tonight, um, do just that. Go to Prevailing Church International YouTube page at 7 p.m. It's going to be great. The words, good. My husband, Dr. Moore, fire. Great word. Awesome. Love y'all. You're going to be home this weekend. Yep. I'll see y'all Sunday. We'll be in the house. We're going to celebrate the concert tonight. Um, no, Sunday night. It's going to be a good, good Sunday. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Awesome. How's the weather before we go? How's the weather in Columbia, South Carolina? Is it? I'm a little cold. I don't know what I was thinking. But I'm a little cold. All right, y'all. Be blessed and um, enjoy your weekend. Uh, see you Sunday. See you Friday night. Um, it's going to be hot. That's right. It's, gonna, it's hot. That's right. That's right. All right, y'all. 
Love y'all. It's crazy. It's hot, right? I'm cold, but it's hot there. Eighty in Georgia. Hey, Elena. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed.